What's up, my ninjas? I'm Strident, and uh, I am back with a review. Um, I'm talking today about Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. It came out on the 23rd. I'm finally getting through the whole thing. And I have to say, it was the biggest piece of garbage. I, I'm just kidding. I'm really just fucking kidding. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. Um, it, it's weird because you, you watch this and you see all these obvious things done and done correctly. And it makes you wonder, how come it took this long? It's not like these stories, they didn't write this stuff from scratch. They took existing material and turned it into something. And I'm kind of, it, it bothers me that it had to be a web series because, you know, it's, it's, it's close, but it's not 100% like, you know, big budget film, uh, you know, quality. But... Uh, they they really did the damn thing. It was it was well done, well choreographed, well scripted, well paced. Usually a lot of stories, uh, Japanese focused stories, stories done by Japanese directors, which was not the case here. But I'm just saying, there, it's it's a different style of pacing and it's really slow and deliberate. You know, um, this it, it had its slow moments, but they were slow for the right reasons. And when it started to fire off with the action, it was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And it's cool because it's about training. For those of you who've been through uh, any kind of training, you know, it's a process. So, you know, watching them go through the process and then, you know, waiting for the payoff when you see them show off their skills. I don't know. I was I was impressed. I wasn't bored, you know, and and that's what we needed all along. Um, the casting was perfect people complained about mike mo oh, he's gonna be too small blah 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 you motherfuckers are why we can't have nice things mike mo did the damn thing he easily personified ryu because he was given good material to work with the material didn't require him to do a whole lot it just required him to be on point be reserved you know what i mean be a a decent human being <laughs> christian howard as ken he already is practically Ken, you know what I mean? He his his uh American accent is perfect. Um he um I don't know, man. He just looks the part. He literally looks like the Ken that we saw on the cover of Street Fighter Alpha way back in the day. And the hair didn't look stupid and you know, even when he got the mullet, you know, at the end of the show <laughs> when he when he cut his hair, he looks the part, you know? Um Akira Koyama as a uh, Guggen. Uh, he, man, it just it it just felt like he was their master. It didn't feel like it was forced. You could feel that they actually had some kind of bond. You know, they actually you know over the time shooting the the film, you could tell they actually you know they dug hanging out with one another. You know, they seemed like maybe outside of all this they probably would still hang out but you felt like he actually gave a shit about his students and if you've had a good teacher before uh, especially in the martial arts because it can be brutal at times if you have a good teacher they usually care about their students you know and you felt that you know um oh, man <laughs> I, i'm just like wow togu uh, i'm sorry togo igawa he was ridiculous too, and it was funny. It almost felt like he was playing the same role he played in uh, Ninja, that Scott Adkin, Adkins film. But there was like this. He he was kind of mean. Like there was like a little bit of of evil in that guy, or rage in that guy. Because I mean, when he was charging up his fireballs, you're just like, what the fuck? Like he had this this scary kind of grin on his face. I don't know. These guys seem like they dug playing these roles. You know what I mean? It seemed like they really got into their character and. You know, this is what Joey Anso was talking about. You know, you always hear, I'm, I'm a fan of the material. I grew up on this shit. And you're like, for real, guys? Really? Stop talking and just show us. You heard it with Transformers. You heard it with G.I. Joe. And they still haven't gotten it right yet. And I'm not arguing with those fans that don't care. Because what showed up on the screen in Transformers was not what we've been reading or watching for years just as the same goes for G.I. Joe. That was not G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe are supposed to make the job look extra easy and you're supposed to see a difference between them and regular military. You never got that. And the fact that the studio don't understand that and the writers don't understand that, it pisses me off. X-Men, same deal. 
that's those aren't x-men movies that we've been getting you know what i mean it's something else it should have been called mutant x the film or something because it's not x-men um in aspects of you know the new spider-man series not so much what we were supposed to be getting although it looks the part you know give them that but this not only looked the part it had it felt proper they humanized characters that you had rarely ever seen in a humanizing light and considering that this is street fighter in which the games do a shitty job of giving you their story because you know unlike a lot of snk games street fighter games didn't have cutscenes in between matches they only had cutscenes when you beat the game and you know in the intro of the game so um a lot of it was exposition like if you played the alpha series when you meet a rival there they talk back and forth and it kind of lets you know what's going on, but it, it doesn't necessarily show you anything. So for them to have read all the comics, you know, the Dreamwave comics from or Udon comics from back in the day, um, for them to have watched all the animes, we're talking, you know, Street Fighter 2, the animated movie in the 90s, um, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha Generation, Street Fighter 2 V, all that shit is in here. You know what I mean? Aspects of it are all in here. Um, all the little nods to things like... Ken wearing the rag that uh, his son Mel was wearing at the end of Street Fighter 3 or the Furen Kazan on uh, Ryu's belt actually being on his belt or uh, the fact that there was a uh, uh, the, the wall of past students and they have Dan in there as a student before Ken and Ryu because they've said that in the games and in the comics that uh, Gukin had a uh, you know, pupil beforehand before them and it was Dan, you know, stuff like that. It's like they didn't just pick the easy stuff, stuff like the fact that they mentioned that there's a military base, uh, you know, in the area. So, you know, they will run into Guile, who Joey Ansa said that Scott Atkins is going to be Guile. My my brain was like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to be awesome. Because Scott Adkins is easily one of my favorites out there. He's underrated as fuck, and he needs more opportunities to show his skills. Um, the choreography. You know I'm a stickler for choreography. The choreography was insane. They did a really good job sticking to the roots of uh, Anatsuken, and I felt like it was, I don't know, it was, it was well done. Um the one criticism I have, this face is weird, but it looks more like Akuma. You know what I mean? Maybe it's the amount of hair that's throwing it off. I don't know, but uh, the big thick nose and the thick eyebrows or, you know, brows, that's what Akuma looks like. And uh, they, this is a promo from Legacy. When they were doing Legacy as, you know, their proof of concept, they had pictures of everybody so you could see kind of what they were going for. And this looks like akuma granted joey anso wasn't as big as he is in the film when he took this picture the face still looked demonic the face that they gave akuma the makeup they used for akuma in the movie or show it just was kind of whack in my opinion it he his his physique and his clothes looked the part but his fucking face makeup was horrible I mean, I get, I've always said it's kind of funny how Akuma becomes bad and he turns into a black man and it's just weird. But you get a brown man right here to play the role. He's got the skills, he's got the physique, you know, everything. But then you don't put much makeup on the guy. You just shadow out his eyes. Like, I'm sorry, it, that doesn't look like Akuma. <laughs> but that's my, that's my only criticism for the whole thing. Everything else in the film was pitch perfect. You know, it was better than what was given to us in past um, animated films, better than what we get in the game as far as story goes. They should have these guys write the story for those for Street Fighter. I mean, too bad the games are shit now, in my opinion, but it would be awesome to get like a, a redux of Street Fighter 3 with these guys writing the story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like a, a Street Fighter anthology of some sort where you've got Alpha 1, 2, and 3, and then you've got uh, Street Fighter 3, all, ver all the three versions of it, and you rewrite the story, redraw all the cutscenes, add cutscenes in the beginning, in between fights, you know, a la SNK, and have these guys write that shit. And then the, the, the games would be that much better because they put the thing that fighting games have been missing 
right back into this, you know? They simply put the story back there because the characters do come from somewhere and they've been doing these things for a reason. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm quite impressed. And even more impressive is the fact that uh, Christian Howard and Joey Ansa wrote this thing together. So you've got martial artist writers that actually can write. You know, you hear these kind of things all the time. I keep, I'm going to dwell on it because it's just one of those things. You hear people say this all the time. Oh yeah, I'm a writer. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a martial artist. I'm an actor. I'm a blah, blah, blah. Or I'm an actor and I'm a writer. Or, and I, I love this material and blah, blah, blah. But then you never see it shown. Now, in this case, everything that they've said all this time during the Kickstarter campaigns, everything, everything that Joey Ansa promised showed up in this the right tone for the emotion the right tone for the comedy it didn't feel out of place the right tone for the whole bromance you know what i'm saying like and i don't even like the term bromance for this because they're just best friends you know what i mean um it felt natural it felt like you know they're they when they're in the ring they're trying to kill each other <laughs> outside of the ring they're like brothers um and that's the, the weird dichotomy between a lot of martial artists we could be the best of friends, but when we get into the school and we get into the ring, the circle, the mat, whatever, we kind of got to go at it like we're, you know, bitter enemies. Because that's kind of how, you know, you're, you're trained if you want to be battle ready. You know what I'm saying? When I say battle ready, like at a moment's notice, you want to switch into fight mode. It's kind of how you have to train. So, um, all in all, you guys need to watch this. It kicks the shit out of Mortal Kombat. Legacy. Mortal Kombat Legacy, their second season just killed all interest for anything else to come from that. They miscast a whole bunch of people. The cast of characters they chose to focus on was just kind of shit. And uh, tone was just weird. There was like no one really to root for because you turned Liu Kang into a bad guy. And that's not the way it works, you know? I was happy to see Mark DeCoscos, you know, as Kung Lao. But it's not the way the story works you know what i'm saying you're doing too much trying to rewrite reinvent the wheel with the, the christopher nolan vibe this is what i love about this they didn't even try to adhere to the whole christopher nolan standard they said we do our own thing and the tone is going to fit the material we're not going to try to give the material a new tone that was not the original intended tone you know what i'm saying and it's about time someone did that so I want to see more. I can't wait till the second season drops so we can see more of the World Warriors, see some good casting. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, they'll have a good Chun-Li that can actually fight that's Chinese. I mean, there's tons of Chinese women that are, you know, wushu and taekwondo stylists, you know, all kinds of female martial artists out there that, you know, are Asian actually and look Asian, you know, that could play the role. Hopefully, uh, you know, We'll get a really cool Zangief. We'll get a really cool, you know, Blanca. And hopefully that makeup will be better than Akuma's. And hopefully they'll fix Akuma's makeup as time goes on. I have to give him props, too, for even showing you Akuma and not having him actually fight, um, you know, in, in the modern story, the, 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 current, the present portion. He didn't fight uh, Gukin or, uh, you know, Ken or Ryu. They actually resisted that. Because if you've noticed, in most modern tellings of their story, they force you to see, you know, those guys fighting each other. You know, and it's kind of, it's tired. It's kind of like, seriously, guys, you don't have to. We know he's, like, ridiculously powerful. I like the fact that he showed up and he's saying, oh, yeah, there'll be a time. Gukin is like, yo, there'll be a time for our fight. But that time's not now. So it's something for us to look forward to. And it could happen off screen and we hear, you know, of Gokin's death, kind of like, you know, the way the games had it happen. And, you know, then you introduce Akuma again, reintroduce him and he's like, you know, <laughs> on more of a rampage than he was beforehand. But, you know, hopefully they'll fix the whole Gokin was in a sleep. He was in a deep sleep when he got his ass trounced by Akuma. Like, really, guys, asleep? Seriously, this is Dragon Ball. You know what I mean? 
they need to come up with a good explanation for that. Maybe a coma, that's what normal people or real people actually go through. Even fighters get put in comas, you know? So, you know, long story short, I'm just, I enjoyed the whole thing thoroughly. Me and my son sat down and watched this, my, my one-year-old. We sat down and we watched, and he was into it. I mean, he was getting up and jumping around when they started fighting. And I'm like, yeah, we're, I can't wait to start training with him. It's going to be amazing. But, uh, yeah, guys, you need to see it. They've finally done it. They've done Street Fighter more justice than Street Fighter has been doing itself. They even gave Yoshinori Ono an opportunity to be in the film, playing himself for the most part. <laughs> um, you know, kind of a swindly opportunist businessman type at a, um underground fighting ring. Um, and I don't know. I was impressed. I just, I just, that's all I can say. It's an impressive, 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 uh, um, you know, uh, uh, attempt or oppressive, impressive, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was just an, an impressive entry into the world of Street Fighter on film. This kid shit out of everything else we've seen on film that was Street Fighter. The fighting was better than uh, Beginning's End because Beginning's End, they used, if you if you know the, the two guys uh, fighting, I forget the guy who plays Ken, I just know him as Yukin from uh, Slug Street Scrappers. And the other guy, uh, his name is Daniel Huar. He practices a whole bunch of styles, but a lot of wushu is always in his choreography and in that he played Ryu and he did a lot of wushu as opposed to a lot more karate and uh, or karate based you know uh, uh, Kyokugen based or Kyokushin I'm sorry Kyokugen Kyokushin based you know moves because if you notice that's the basis for Anatsuken it's um, it's Kyokushin because that's what Masoyama went on to create. So they took a lot of ideas and things from that. They also took ideas and pieces from Jeet Kune Do. So uh, in Beginning's End, they weren't necessarily fighting true to the characters. They were close, though, because there was a lot of really good shit in there. This one, though, it was 100% on point. You know, having the, the jump double spin, uh, you know, spin kick as the, you know, Senpu kick. I was like, that's the way you do it. This was exactly what I was thinking they were going to do. Because I'm like, how else would you do it? Or the fact that when Joey Ansa did it, he did it more of a capoeira style where he hit them with the, you know, the sole of his foot instead of hitting, or the, I'm sorry, the sickle foot, as opposed to hitting them with the back of his foot. Um, it's just little things, man, that you, you notice if you're, you know, really into it. If you're a martial artist as well, you know what these moves are supposed to be like. It's cool to see that this... You have martial artists that are writing it, so when they do go and do the choreography, they're paying attention to those little details that make this stand out from, you know, any other version. And I think that's what keeps the shit pure, and that's the way it needs to be. We need this level of love and attention in more of our, you know, our, our fandom, in more of our, our, our films that are trying to capitalize off of pop culture, you know, comics and video games and, you know, whatever, cartoons. When they try to adapt the shit to the big screen, they need this level of care. And they did this shit for $2 million. And they, they put this level of care. The studios are slacking. So anyway, it's my story. I'm sticking to it. This shit was awesome. Um, you need to see it. And uh, enough said. Peace outside.